sing that part behind me, just that one little part there. Before me, behind me. Again. You're always beside me. Again. No shadow, no valley. Where you won't find me. No, I am not afraid. Before, Before me, me, beside me. Before me, behind me. Again. Before always me. beside me. No shadow, no valley. Where you won't find me, no, I am not afraid. Before me, before me, behind me, always beside me. Before me, behind me, always beside me. Before me, behind me, always beside me, no shadow. Can you imagine David when he was a little boy, young boy, 17 years old, or however old he was when he faced Goliath? The opposition and the words that were opposing him. He comes there and is under his father's authority, under his father's command. He said, Take this to your brothers, some cheese and some loaves. And he gets there and he begins to deliver it to his brothers. And his brothers begin accusing him, like, why are you here? What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be back there? Saul even comes to him and said, hey, try this. Put this on. See if this will work for you. And when he get, begins to head down the valley to where Goliath is going to meet him, I can just imagine everybody saying, good luck. So if we are not confident in what the Lord has spoken to us, we will be afraid. David, he remembered, I fought the bear, I fought the lion. God prepared me for this moment. I just encourage you today, don't listen to what the world says. Listen to what the word, what God says about you and who you are. Do not be afraid. Sometimes it takes a little while to muster that up, I guess. But really, if we understand Christ in me, the Lord of glory, who can be against you? If he is for you, who can be against you? Doesn't mean that we are not going to face some opposition. Look up, for your salvation draws nigh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just rejoice in his goodness. You can be seated. We're going to ask you a couple questions here. Um, kind of where we're headed, to, I guess, as far as at this moment in time, lots of things happening this spring. Um, encouraging you to be a part of what God's doing and Steph, if you don't mind, I might ask you, I can bring the mic to you, or you can come back here. Whichever one you want to do. She can come up here. Uh, kiddos can go downstairs for Children's Church, if there's any left up in here. Um, do you know what you're going to talk about? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'm just going to uh, share just a little bit. Um, after we did the Lose the Luggage conference last fall, um, it, it was just like I had this um, level up. It, it was time to level up. And um, did any of you ever play Mario Kart when you were little or um, even just that, the original Mario game? And, you know, it's like you start off and you hit that first thing and there's the mushroom so you can get big right away. And, right, you, you know what I'm talking about, okay? So you get to the end, you jump on the flagpole and they give you 500 bonus points or something. And then you got to go down to this tunnel and then in this tunnel there's level two. And this has like these fire things that are like, these weren't in level one. Like, what is this? It's a lot harder. So um, it's kind of how I felt just moving into this conference for the roundtables. 
And, um, and Steph and I were just trying to figure out what do we do? We just felt like we should do something different in addition to, not sure. Um, but just very clearly, I felt like God wanted us to move in this direction. And uh, so just in our, our own personal lives, Nick and I, um, we have walked through some water this last couple of weeks. And um, to be honest, it's probably the hardest conference that um, I've been involved in, that I've planned with. Um, I, I actually, well, I had a little meme, but um, like if you could picture a little kid laying on their back with their uh, snowsuit on, and a parent just comes and picks them up and like carries them, right? I was that kid that was laying in the snow in my snowsuit. It's like, I mean, I'm willing, but I, have, I don't have anything. I just don't. Um, probably about 10 years ago, um, I had a word prophesied over me, and it was that, um, that I would plow the ground so that women could come behind me. So I would plow an area um, that it didn't seem super difficult for me, but it would be impossible for others to go unless I went. They would feel like it was impossible. And um, I, I've been able to see that come full circle, right? Where um, that even just this last conference, um, a lot of the time, Steph and I feel like we're leading the charge in this, and then you know people are coming behind us. Um, but this time, it almost just felt like we were leading the charge, but then we got to this point where the trail had ended because we hadn't been here before. And um, we needed people to come with machetes alongside of us and whack some of the, the stuff that was in our way. And so even Trina Slee yesterday, she was talking about Moses and how um, Aaron and her came alongside of him because when he grew weary, they were able to hold his hands up. And... Um, Faith, Kirsten, Michelle, I mean, the, the speakers that have been here, they came and they held our hands up, and they came alongside, and they, they, they plowed the ground with us, and I'm, I'm just so grateful for that because um, it, it might seem like it was easy. This was our 10th conference that we've done with, with women's, with men's, with Jordan, our 10th conference, so it should seem really easy, and it, it was not easy. It was not easy. Um, even at one point um, in my mind, I was just like, I'm going to ask God, did I hear you right? But I couldn't even form the words because I knew. I knew he spoke to me, just like he said. Like, you got to know the promise. You have to know what God spoke to you because there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of things and there's a lot of opposition. And if I'm weary and, and all of the things, it's really easy just to throw in the towel and like, I'm not going to do this. Like, We've done it. I'm done. I, I don't want to. But I knew what God had spoke, and we just we walked in that. We came, came and had people walk alongside of us. So um, my dad used this example this morning um, in Abundant Life class. And so there's a clock here. It doesn't even have um, one of the, the second hands on it, right, that's ticking every, every second. Um, so if you look at this at first glance, it doesn't show like anything's moving. It doesn't even look like anything's working, like are you, are you hearing? Are you going to do something? Like, there's just nothing there. But if you open the back of a clock up, there's gears that are in there, right? And there's things that are happening constantly. There's, there's movement happening. And so just even in these conferences, even on Sunday mornings, there's things that are happening, but it takes people to do that, right? And so for a while, we've been here. We've been, we've been this minute hand. And we're just kind of, you know, we're enjoying it. It's fun. We're, we're going along. Um, but there's people back here, and there's people like Amber that grow weary because of life circumstances, and so when there's other gears that are moving me along, I have no other choice, right? It makes it easy for me because Steph came alongside, and, and she moved, and Michelle came alongside, and she was moving, and so all of those gears are important so that when one wants to stop, it doesn't have a choice because it's, it's okay. It's easy that I can move in that. And so I would just encourage you today that as we're moving forward, um, things are different. And I don't like that very much. Like, my flesh doesn't like that. Um, I don't really love the round tables. <laughs> I don't because it's just like, that's uncomfortable. And I just want to sit where I sat and, and be done with it. Like, and now we have to, like, weave through all these tables just to get to the front and the back. And, like, that's not super fun, right? Um, I like a plan. And you guys, I've told you that, right? I like the color-coded plan. Let's just follow the plan. And... And so even for this roundtable, we didn't have a plan. I mean, we, we sketched it out, but we hadn't been there. We hadn't done it. We didn't know what it was going to look like. We assembled these birdhouses. It felt like a hot mess. And we're like, you guys, we had a plan, and you didn't follow the plan. But it wasn't what God had. That was, that was our plan. That was what we thought. And, and we, we did our best, right? We thought that we were going to move in this. We provided it. 
But little did we know, that's not what God had. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't trying to do what I thought needed to be done, but yet he was creating community. He was creating laughter. He was creating connection, bonds. Um, so people at the table were able to laugh together. They were, yeah, it was fun, right? Serving Jesus is fun. It is. And there's some hard days and there's some weary days, but it's fun. Like, I don't want to be anywhere else but here on Sunday morning. I don't, I don't want, if there's a conference happening, I'm going to be there. Like, I want to know what God is doing in our church, in our community, what he has, and, and so to be engaged in that. So I encourage you, if you're a minute hand, if you've been sitting there and, um, you know, just enjoying the ride, or if you're frustrated that there's some minute hand people in here, then make sure you're back here helping things move along, right? Be involved because it's fun. There's work to do. There's people that are coming in. There's a community to reach, and we need to be involved in that. I don't know what I'm supposed to say after that. <laughs> um, is there a specific question I'm supposed to be answering here? Oh. Um, I think the biggest thing that God's doing in my heart is just uh, all of us can hear. All of us can hear from God. God speaks to all of us. And so if you tune your ear and you just put in, make the steps, read your Bible, come to church, be around people who are serving God, you can hear too. And if you just turn off the noise, Step away from the distractions for a minute. Um, he's got a plan, and he can speak directly to you. And there's a spot for you at the table. There is work for you to do. There's a spot for you. Um, and we're called to love people. And sometimes we assume that they know all of the things that we do. And so we need to, to help them build their building blocks. We need to help them build their foundation so that they're strong too and that they can carry out what they we're sent here to do. Everybody has work to do and a plan that God has for them. And so um, just making sure that we're bringing everybody along with us, which definitely ties in with everything that Amber just said, but there's, there's a spot and there's a place for all of us. And, um, we, we did the conference by ourselves. I mean, it was just her and I, and, and that was by our choice, right? We, um, we knew what we wanted and we can execute things. And so um, the first couple times we just did it. We did it all. We were upstairs and we were downstairs in the kitchen. And, and so by the end of it, you're just so exhausted and it's not for your enjoyment at all. And, and so then uh, my dad had kind of taken the lead on, you know, I can get some guys to do the kitchen for you, you know, and, and so um, that's happened the last few years. And so um, even Steph, you know, like, her and I are a little bit of a perfectionist and we like things to be, you know, according to the plan. And so sometimes it's hard to be like, here you go, put those centerpieces on the table. <laughs> Please do it right, you know? But, but yet, it's okay, right? It's okay. And it's allowing other people to walk in their giftings. It's allowing other people to grow. And just even in that, you know, we're growing. Steph had shared about um, reading the Bible on Friday night. And um, it's, we can just be real, right? Like, how many of us have started, you know, the, the read the Bible in a year, you know? And it's just like, we get through this and it's like, Yep, and this is where I stop every single time, right? But if we could just be real, it's not like, oh, I read the Bible cover to cover every year. That's just what I, like, just be real with people, you know? And so, anyway, it has allowed us to grow. So she has grown in the last year. She has grown in the last three years. I have grown. Like, we're all growing in the things. We don't have it figured out. I did not have this conference figured out. It was not easy, but yet I know what God spoke. I know the promise and I can rely on other people. So we're, we're linking arms. We're doing relationship with other people. We're, we're walking in this together. And so um, thank you for coming alongside. Rocky, I mean, he just, he's this, you know, steady, quiet guy, but yet he makes things happen behind the scenes that are easy. And um, even just Kirsten, her and her boys came and, and they helped set all of this up. You know, they didn't have to do that, but they wanted to be involved and it came and it helped lift our arms when we were tired. And so thank you for being a part of, even if you weren't here for the conference, that, um, that we know I could call on any of you and, and you would support and you would encourage and you do what needs to be done. And so I just appreciate that about church family. My three cheerleaders that came this weekend to spend time with me and to, to be here when I got the chance to speak. Uh, my mom, Sharon, is, go ahead and stand up or wave or something. <laughs> That's my mama. And beside her is her sister, my aunt Sheila. And my friend Kathy. Her and my mom are best friends and she's a part of our life and I'm thankful that she came.
Wow, life is fun, huh? Even when in the middle of a storm, it's sometimes fun. <laughs> um, one of the most amazing stories, I think, in the Bible is that uh, when Jesus was uh, in the boat asleep and his, uh, his, his friends, his uh, disciples, were freaking out, right? And Jesus was that close to him. And so, anyway, just an interesting thing that we, uh, what a great picture of that when you are in the middle of a storm, he is there. And even to the point of when you call on him, he responds. And so, just so neat, uh, um, the life that, uh, that we have in Christ Jesus. And today, um, actually before we um, do that, we, we are actually having a speaker come. Um, do you want to talk about him just a little bit? As long as we're talking about whatever, let's just do that. Jim Hockaday will be coming um, the end of, of the April. We're going to have another conference. And um, uh, I guess one of the things that the, the journey of, with Jesus is so big. And, and sometimes you uh, uh, navigate through a lot of things, right? Um, so, for instance, here, you know, uh, we have the round table, we have a women's conference, we have men's conference, and sometimes we go, I don't like that part. Or you go, I don't like him speaking about such and such. But I, I think as a Christian, we need to be well-rounded in a lot of areas. Um, and so these things bring us into a place of community, but it also brings us into a place of being well-rounded, okay? Um, and we know some people that all they talk about is revelations. That's all they talk about. Or maybe they talk about all they talk about is the wickedness of this world. Or they talk about, did you know about angels? You know what I mean? Which is all part of whatever, but still in the same sense, I think we need to be well-rounded when we go into our community because they're asking questions not just about revelations, not just about, you know what I'm saying? So as we, as we walk through this, uh, we begin to walk in the knowledge of God. And God has given us people and connections and relationships to help us as a body to move in a direction that he wants us to. I've been set up, right? Yeah. It happens a lot here. It's not really a, an actual throwing under the bus. It just kind of feels like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in, in response to that or, or in continuation to that, the, the, rel, the well-roundedness of the, of the body of Christ, because Tom is correct. We all have, just like as we are each a different part of the body, we all have different ideas and we're bent in different directions and we focus on different things and so i i think uh amber has been working where'd you go amber okay yeah amber and 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 stephanie have been working on these conferences and building things and we've been talking about um it's time uh, we believe that the lord is telling us it's time to do things differently. And I think about the traditions of man and how Scripture comes against the traditions of man and how quietly we can find ourselves operating within the traditions of man and not even realize it. And so a lot of that um, brought me to this next place where I, I just like, you know, I listen to a lot of teachers. I, I, you know, obviously, I'm here in this church listening to Tom, and he's teaching constantly. And then I'm outside of church listening to all kinds of teachers, different teachers teaching. And I felt it was time for us to bring in somebody that we maybe don't have a relationship with. And so I started reaching out to a couple of different teachers, and um, Jim Hawkaday, uh, they live down in uh, Colorado, I, I think just outside of Denver somewhere. And I've seen him teach in other churches. I've seen him teach in churches that I've watched and their pastors teach. 
So you see how this kind of trickles down to a degree. Anyway, I reached out, I contacted Jim, um, his wife, Erin, and asked them if they would like to come to a conference in, in Glasgow. And I think, you know, I, we're just going to have them, ask them to come, you know, and they want to know. I just sent them an email. I gave them a date. And they said, yeah, we'll come. Um, Jim is known to a lot of people as um, what the world might term a faith healer. Um, he is so, so much more than that. Uh, that is just one aspect of his ministry. He is well-rounded. He is very articulate. He is very involved in the, in the, with the workings of the ministry and so on and so forth. So I think um, as this comes about and the opportunity for him and his wife Erin to come and, and see what's happening, what I think we will see um, is that much of what is being taught out there um, by what I call responsible teachers, you're going to find out is being taught here already. And you say, well, why bring him? Because I think it's important that we understand, you know, when Jesus says that a prophet is not known in his own town, when he goes home and he starts preaching the word, and they go, well, you know, that's Jesus. He's the son of the carpenter. What could he possibly know? And sometimes we can unknowingly fall into that trap. We're just little old Glasgow and little old Assembly of God church that just, you know, Pastor Tom, just a farmer, you know, there's his folks sitting in the back, and I go, we need to know and we need to understand that's what being, that what is being taught here is being taught out there. And when you get that revelation and understanding, it starts to establish your foundation even greater. So I, I would encourage you. Please start looking forward to this. He's online. He's on YouTube. He's got teachings. We started looking at a teaching the other night. Dave came up to the house, uh, and we looked. At, I'm sure, is that the first time you've seen him? Yeah. And so, very interesting, very entertaining, very, very good teacher. So. Um, uh, like, like, uh, Stephanie said, I just, uh, you, there was a spark in your eyes, um, when she was talking because she had received a uh, new revelation of the word and how to apply to walk in the word. And so it's just so cool because it's, she's not just talking about it. She's living it. And, and so that's so, uh, amazing. I always said this, you know, even in my case, you know, if it hasn't processed and went through my heart. Or if I've just heard it from another speaker and I speak it out, what is that? But when it, when it goes through my heart, right, mm -hmm. it's real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, so anyway, uh, most of the things that we talk about um, are new to me at times. Uh, one of the things that, uh, as we studied out the gifts, heard about them, um, and, and I know there's so much more to know about them, but the motivational gifts, you know, and uh, ministry gifts and, and the gifts of uh, manifestation, how valuable uh, they are to us, um, the body of Christ, how we work together, kind of like the clock thing. Uh, we're here to um, make a difference. And the other thing, too, that I, I believe, I really believe that the Lord is, is calling us into is um, we have pretty much, in my case, um, and I'll just use me so you're not feeling like I'm condemning you, but um, in our case, we're really inwardly focused. Um, and, and so what, what happens is when I'm studying or when I'm living life, we live a life like this, and it's about what's the next, next best, best thing for me? What can I get out of whatever? You know what I mean? So we live this life, but um, God wants us to live a life of this, of community. Um, how can I help? Wilma, excel in where she's at. How can I help Roy excel in where he's at? So we all have these things that God wants us to excel in. 
and he uh, allows us to have a relationship with one another um, as we do that. I don't know if you, um, in coaching, um, I've had some fantastic coaches in my life, inspirational, and I was willing to follow their instructions. I was willing to watch them. I was willing to um, uh, get down with them and, and learn the nitty-gritty things. And there were some coaches that were terrible coaches. <laughs> but I'm just saying that I want you, and I'm, I'm, I'm wanting our body to learn and, and to know what God has called us to do. And there's some nitty-gritty learning. Um, we have to be, um, even right now, right? We can, we can say what, uh, we can take what Vic said and put it right here, put it on the shelf, and I'll wait till he gets here. We can do that, honestly. But he mentioned a couple things that, shit, man, this guy, I'm going to look him up. You know what I mean? Um, I'm going to look in the Word. What does the Word say about whatever, whatever? You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I guarantee you, in a sense, that as we're, as we're walking through this, that what you're walking through, what, you are, what you're experiencing right now through the Word, what you're experiencing in Christ Jesus, there's confirmation to come. Not just through Him, but there's confirmation to come. And so and that's what's so cool about serving Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is amazing. Today we're going to talk about, who's this from today? This is from... John, isn't that fun, huh? Uh, we're going to talk about Christ is life. And so if I could have you turn to uh, John 14, 6. Uh, the theme that I talked about um, a little bit uh, this week as I spoke yesterday uh, is just to encourage you to allow Jesus' expression of love to make an impression on your life. I want you to have the confidence, right? Um, not only in what Jesus has done, and not only in what Jesus has said, but what, but who he is. And I think, I've been thinking a lot about bears witness. Remember the Father? The, the, the Holy Spirit bears witness of the Son. The Son bears witness of the, the Father. Father bears witness of his Son. Okay? So there's a witness. And so these three things are a witness and we, and we see this. John talks about it a lot. Um, Jesus came to bear witness of his Father. Okay? And so we're going to come into this place of, of who is Jesus? Uh, what, what, is your, what is your takeaway from the t context of Scripture? Our focus, I believe, is on Jesus. And I want to I go to... Colossians 1, 15 through 20. We're not separating, segregating Jesus from the Father, Jesus from the Holy Spirit. We're talking about Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Man. Okay. Um, Colossians 1, 15, already there. Jesus is our focal point. When you look through Scripture, Stephanie kind of talked about this, is what we see back in the Old Testament, even in the first verse, and even in um, the, the chapter 3, we see the Lord or the scriptures speaking of Jesus, okay? The prophets speak of Jesus. When we get to the New Testament, we see Jesus um, as the Son of God, the Son of Man. And as we go further into the after the cross, we see Jesus in his ministry as a mediator, as the high priest for us. Um, he's praying for you, even today. And so it's, I, I believe it's important that we see the well-roundedness or see where we are in this journey of knowing Christ as our Savior. So as we look at this, um, I'm just trying to reiterate, reiterate the fact that Jesus is and becomes the focal point. Um, I'll start in verse number 15. And He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself um, might come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him. Very important that we see Jesus in this. Did Jesus do this by himself? Absolutely not. With the working of the Father and the working of the Holy Spirit, right? The Father said, I've sent my Son. The Father said, I loved you so much that I gave you my Son. The Holy Spirit comes when Jesus is laying in the tomb, and the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right, dwells in us. We see the interaction of the three. So in, in, in no case are we... Um, uh, are we separating or saying Jesus did this all alone? Here we go. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Now, I guess one of my greatest things that I think of, and I've said this lots of times, that we are atmosphere changers. I believe that God has put us in an arena, and um, we're in different arenas, but God has given us authority in that arena. Now, I believe that we can make a difference because of Jesus. I, can, I believe that we can make a difference because who Christ who lives within us. I believe that we can make a difference because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We can make a difference. So, if, if that was not the case, we're not in a losing battle. We see wickedness. Um, the enemy magnifies wickedness. The world magnifies wickedness. The news feeds off of wickedness. The natural man loves wickedness. To navigate towards wickedness. Why don't they report report all the good things that are happening? They don't, okay? Because the world sees that men, women love to navigate that way. It's all on popularity. It's how much, I don't know how they do this, but they know how many people are watching such and such, right? And so when we talk about something like this, they get more responses. When you talk about the good things, they get less responses, right? And so God is saying we can make a difference. His word says so. Look at David. I don't know why we're going there, but David, one man, one young boy, I can make a difference. First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the instructions of my dad, which gives me authority to be there. And then I'm also going to follow the instructions of the Lord. And I'm going to do what he's called me to do. I'm going to destroy the enemy. I don't care if anybody's behind me, right? For he is behind me and he is for me. Anyway, um, John 14, 6, here we go. Uh, 14, 6, yes. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And I want to land on the word life, okay? The word life is Zoe which speaks and refers to the principle of life in the spirit man and the soulish man. Why is that important? Because Jesus, he breathed on his disciples. Jesus gave us the breath of life. And what does that mean? That means that we have been born again. I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Jesus is the door into eternal life. Talked a little bit about Costco. Um, we have, um, in our homes, we have a pantry, very limited at times. Sometimes you run out of chocolate-covered almonds, right? So you go in there expecting them, 
and there's none there, right? But what if you went into Costco and there's an abundance? Two things that you have to do to get into Costco. We said this yesterday. What is one thing? You have to be a member. What's the other thing? You have to walk through the door. Okay? Why do we get freaked out when Jesus says, I am the door? He says, to be a member, not the member of the church, but to be a member, to be a part of my pasture, to be a part of my flock, you must come through me. You must accept me as your Lord and Savior. And you walk through the door, and there's an abundance. Okay? If you don't walk through the door, you lack. So we have to have that picture, I guess, of that abundance. Zoe speaks of um, the, the spiritual and soul um, life. Okay? Now, let me, let me keep going for just a minute. There is a distinction between a, the spirit and soul life then um, it's, it's called bios. It's, it's a Greek word. It's called the physical life. It's called, um, it's beyond our livelihood here on this earth. Okay? So Zoe is beyond bios. Okay? We put a lot of emphasis on our livelihood here. Does God care about our livelihood here? Yes, He does. He cares. You are out in this world and you are. You are doing what he's called you to do. Okay? How many need physical strength sometimes? Does God care about that? Absolutely he does. Right? So, but, it, but it, what he's talking about, he's talking about life. He has given us life. He's given us Zoe. You know, when you pray, are you praying about your livelihood? Or are you focusing on your spirit man and your soulish man? All are important. Don't, 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 don't let me uh, get you wrong here, okay? We have a physical body. This transports us, walking down the stairs, going to our neighbors, going to the grocery. This is part of it, too, okay? God cares about that as well. Okay. Um, so let me, uh, let me read the definition of Zoe. Zoe... Life in the spirit realm and it, or in the spirit and the soul is this. It's, noble, it's a nobler word expressing all of the highest and best which Christ is, which he has given to the saints, his children, the highest blessedness. Now, where's Jesus? His name is at the highest spot. So what he has for you and I is blessedness to the highest degree. I love that so much. Why is that important? Let's go to John 1, 1 John. 1 John 1. 1 John 1. 1 John 1. We're going to do one through three. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes. This is John writing about Jesus. Jesus, John, the one who laid his head in the breast of Jesus. John, uh, uh, the beloved, if you want to say it that way, um, had a great connection with Jesus. Uh, what was from the beginning, what, was, uh, what, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have beheld with our hands, we have handled concerning the word of life. And the life, once again, that life is soulish life. It's, uh, it's spirit life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, that you also may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. As I was preparing to talk about communion um, yesterday, um, I had to kind of run this 
by Amber and I run it by my wife and just kind of sensing the direction. And so um, as, as I was preparing, I'm, I'm talking about the love of God that he has for not just us, okay? We have, a, we have an audience. The different, we have a different audience yesterday. So as, as, as we're talking about this, I'm talking about the love that God has for individuals. And as I'm talking and I'm uh, walking through this with the Lord at home, preparing for this, the word hopelessness came up. Hopelessness. We live in a world, generally speaking, of hopelessness, possibly even in the Christian community as well as the world. Where does hopelessness come from? Okay, let me give you a definition here. It's a form of despair that things won't get better. <laughs> what a stinking lie. What a stinking lie. Right? It is. So you dwell on the despair and when you dwell on the despair, I'm not saying that, that what you're going through isn't real. I'm not saying it's not in front of your face. I'm not saying it's painful. I'm saying that what you're going through, right, cannot be your focus. We said something downstairs. I think Vic said it this morning. And so as I'm, as I'm walking through this, I'm hearing the word hopelessness. I'm also hearing the word suicide. Hopelessness will lead you to suicide. We see it happening more so probably than ever before. Okay. So I had to ask my wife and I asked Amber, I said, you know what? I feel like the Lord is directing me to talk about suicide and talk about hopelessness. So I'm gonna bring a gun, I'm gonna set it here. And I'm going to bring a bottle of pills. And I'm going to set it there. Okay? Pretty in your face, right? So I had to do it as I was just sitting there. And sometimes I sit there and then I just go away from it for a while. And just let the Lord begin to minister, I guess. Give me direction. Ask my wife. Um, I don't ask her everything. Um, I honored Amber in the, in the decision as well. What do you think about this? And as, as I, I'm talking about this, is it, is it appropriate to talk about suicide? Is it appropriate to bring such and such? Some of the things that we skirt around, I talked to Kirsten a little bit about this too, is suicide, sex, and what was the other one? Divorce. The church kind of just scoots around that. Let's just brush it under the rug, not deal with it. So today, I mean kind of in your face, um, hopelessness. We have the hope of glory. The hope lives within us. Doesn't mean that we're not going to have some difficult days, right? Can you imagine Peter, John, maybe Peter wasn't there, but John looking up, Jesus is hanging on the cross, their Savior, dead? I'd probably feel pretty hopeless right then. Because I had a Wrong expectation of who he was or who he is. You know what I mean? And, and, and as I step back from the cross and I begin to listen, I hear his words. <laughs> I must die so that you can live. I will be placed in this tomb for three days and I will rise again. And all those things begin to reflect, right? And so this is, this is so important. Um, what Jesus has done is important. What Jesus has said is so important. And who he is is just as important. So adding those three things together, right? And Jesus rises from the dead. He, he's, he's doing or um, he's uh, becoming who he said he would be in the sense of, I'm alive. Right. What hope was brought into the situation? When we talk about fellowship, I'm going to I'm jump on on 1 John again. Fellowship. So as I'm talking about, thinking about 
the gun, I'm thinking about the pill, I'm thinking about uh, pills, I'm thinking about um, the gun, I'm thinking about hopelessness. And as I walked away and I came back six, eight hours later, whatever, the key came. Elevate Jesus. Sometimes we talk about the problem so much that we're not, we're just always so focused on the problem. The answer is Jesus. We elevate Jesus. Isn't that exciting? It's Jesus. We've, we elevate him. But the world wants to suck you over here. The natural man wants to suck you over here. The eyes want to suck you. Elevate Jesus. Amen. And so the, 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 the uh, subject matter, if you want to say, went a whole different direction. I didn't talk about the negative. I talked about the positive. Now, uh, as I was speaking... Um, Brooke was sitting right there, and she was bawling when I said the word hopelessness. And I asked her last night, I said, what, what was going on at that time? She said as she was driving up here, she said that, that there was the spirit of suicide trying to be a part of someone's life, negativity, hopelessness, okay? So in me, right, it confirms God was wanting to speak to an individual about having hope. Isn't that so good? Um, even in her case, she goes, I don't know who it was, but there was someone here in a hopeless situation. But if I don't give them the rope, if I don't give them life in Christ, right? He pulled us out of the miry cave. He pulled us out of darkness. And that's what we're doing. We're bringing truth and we're bringing life and we're bringing light. We're going to shift gears just a little bit. Um, we're going to do communion. So if I could get some guys to hand out the communion, um, you can just set it at the table there and we'll go through it in just a minute. Kirsten, can you play? Four guys. Jump up and get it handed out. That'd be awesome. I know that we've been talking about, um, the last couple weeks we've been talking about Jesus full of grace and truth. And um, I think it's so important that we understand, what, first of all, what grace is. Um, and there's many facets to grace. But also, what is truth? Jesus was full of grace and full of truth. When Jesus operates in grace, he's operating in truth. When Jesus operates in truth, he's also operating in grace. And so I, I believe that as we are walking forward, right? Are you walking in grace, full of grace, and are you walking full of truth? Truth is knowledge, in a sense. But truth is Jesus. So when I look at this, Christ um, is life. What is it? What is life? How does Christ bring life to me? How am I living in Christ? We, we've kind of been talking about this. We have to know who we are in Christ, right? But if we don't know who Christ is, how can we know who we are in Christ? Amen? Amen. So it's important that we see this as well. Jesus, full of grace and truth. As Amber was talking about the clock, sometimes when we look at someone's life, or maybe we've been a part of somebody's life, we really don't see them moving towards the Lord, per se. I know that, um, you know, some people come, and, and I guess you go to that person or they come to you, and you give them godly wisdom, and they do just the opposite. <laughs> Sometimes we get frustrated. 
Why are you frustrated? Wrong motives. It's about you. We believe that, um, I think Mel said it this morning, that um, when we speak the word of God, when we, when we say the word of God, we say it in faith. We speak it. We believe that God answers prayer. We believe that when we pray, the, righteous, the, 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 the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Dave is getting ready to plant some seed. Rocky's getting ready to plant some seed into the soil, right? They're planting it in faith. First, they're making sure it's good seed, and they're planting it. We're planting good seed. So we have to, in, 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 in our life, we have to have faith that the words that we're speaking are of value and whole power. Okay? Um, one of the things that, even as we were as preparing this morning, are you willing to be discipled? And one of the things that Chris said yesterday, or last week was, we hear the word of God, but are we listening? And are you allowing the word of God to go from here to here? Does your carnal mind wrestle with the things of God, what God says? You know, um, it's not funny, but it's kind of funny, is that I put chairs up in the back because I knew my dad wouldn't sit by a chair around the table. Aren't you just thankful we have chairs? We're not in a dirt floor, freezing, right? But if it was, it'd still be okay. Paul rejoiced in a cell. Our attitude, (laughs) our expectation. Amen. Okay, my question. We, uh, You know, when a friend of mine flies a lot, good pilot, um, and so he comes and he flies for Stat Air, and when you come and you fly a new plane, you have to test under the new plane, okay? The farmer mentality says, I can do this, right? (laughs) Which you can. I got this. I got this, right? No, you don't got this, right? You have to be instructed. Okay? Now, even for, I I believe they have a yearly, maybe a two-year certification. First of all, their plane has to be checked. But also, they have to do so many touch and goes, right? They've done hundreds of them but they still have to test, right? Under another instructor. My question to you today, as a disciple and a disciple maker, are you impatient with those out there? So I'm gonna use a couple of phrases that we use because it's almost like a cop-out. If someone's in trouble, right, and I'm saying this pretty lightly, you just need more of Jesus. True. But are you willing to sit down with them and say, this is what I mean. Most of us would say, no, I don't want to do that. But that's not a disciple. A disciple is willing to be rejected. There's some opposition that comes when you're a disciple. There's going to be some words that possibly land on the concrete. But in time, I think you said it this morning, maybe some soil will blow in and land on that seed. We don't know. 
Jesus has just asked us. Father has asked us. Sow the seed. Here's another one. You just need to read the word. What does that mean? Here we go. This is how I do it. This is how I started. This is how I failed. (laughs) Miserably. But this is how I'm doing it now. Maybe it'll work for you. Now we're, we're relying on the Holy Spirit. Not about you, but it is about you. Because you're spree- speaking those words. I heard a statement last week, and then we'll take communion. Um, God is going to, God is drawing people to himself. The Holy Spirit is convicting the sinner. Okay? And they'll be coming in, and they are coming in. Use this a little loosely here. They're like a seed. God has given you a seed. Will we be like birds and eat them up? Because they don't fit in. They're not like us. They're doing this or they're doing that. We're not going to be that church. (laughs) We're not going to be that church. If the seed lands here, we're going to get some soil. We get some water. He's going to cause the increase. But we're going to be a great part of that seed. And it's not, we're not waiting for him to come in. I'm going a little long, but I, I just need to express this. <clears throat> when, a, when, when you bring somebody in, okay, someone's new is coming in. First of all, they're probably going to come with you, right? Or you say, man, I'll just meet you at the door. Help them come in. Invite them in, okay? The other part is this. Help them to feel a part of the community. That's what we want to do. Lost my train of thought in one area. Let's break bread together. Let's just lift up the cup or the bread. The disciples were around Jesus. <laughs> and when you when you bring somebody in, this is where I was going. When you bring somebody in, what you're saying is, I trust you, Pastor. I trust you, Lorraine, I trust you that this will be a great setting, an inviting setting for them to be here. I trust you. They're trusting you by coming here. But we also want to build a level of trust so that we can speak into them. Let's take this breath. Father, I thank you today for growth. Thank you for life. God, you said that you are the bread of life. Eat of me. We want life. We have to eat of him. We have to consume his word. We have to consume truth. We have to consume it. Lord, I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus that has washed us free, that there is no bondage, no chains, no nothing that can separate us from the love of God any longer. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that has power in it to be an overcomer. 
to bring forth eternal life, to bring forth that higher level of our life here on this earth. So today we just commune with you, we communicate with you. We're in community, commune, fellowship. The value that you've placed on that. Not only value placed on fellowship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but the value you've placed on our love for our brethren. Our time with our brethren is as important. Let us take the cup together. Thank you, Lord. I want to sit just for a second. Thank you, Lord.